Mog Antaru disease is an autoimmune disease which affects the central nervous system. Originally this condition was thought to be involved in other autoimmune conditions such as multiple sclerosis or neuromyelitis optica, but in recent years has started to be recognised as its own separate condition. I'm Scott from My Myelitis and in this video I'm going to be explaining what Mog Antaru disease is, what the main presentations and symptoms are, how it is diagnosed and finally how it is treated. So, let's get started. So what is Mog Antwoody disease? Mog stands for myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein and thankfully you only need to know what one of those words means. Myelin is a white fatty material which covers nerves acting as an insulator so that nerve signals can be sent faster throughout the central nerve system, similar to how plastic insulates a copper wire. MOG sits on top of the myelin and it is believed to help maintain it by protecting it and repairing it when it gets damaged. When a MOG antibody disease attack or relapse happens, the body generates antibodies which attack the MOG proteins. When this happens, the myelin is also attacked, damaging the nerves beneath it. This means that messages sent through the nerves are slowed down or stopped entirely. This process is called demyelination and it is what causes inflammation and symptoms to appear. So what are the main presentations and symptoms of Mogantibury disease? Symptoms of Mogantibury disease can present differently in every person. The most common presentations are optic neuritis followed by transverse myelitis and then acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. Optic neuritis is when the optic nerves are attacked by the antibodies, stopping messages passing from the eye to the brain. This can occur in one or both eyes at the same time. Symptoms of optic neuritis include the loss of central and or peripheral vision, loss of colour vision or how sharp the vision is. Some people with optic neuritis also report seeing flickering, flashing and sparkles when moving their eyes. Transverse myelitis is when the spinal cord is attacked by the MOG antibodies, which prevents messages passing from the brain to the body and vice versa. Transverse myelitis affects everyone differently and symptoms are largely dependent on which segments of the spinal cord are affected. Main symptoms of transverse myelitis are pain, loss of or abnormal sensation, and bladder and bowel issues. Acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, also known as ADEM, is another possible presentation of Mog Antwoody disease. This condition tends to present with symptoms such as headache, fatigue, nausea, decreased consciousness, fever and vomiting. In severe cases of ADEM, seizures and a coma can also present. So how is Mog Antwoody disease diagnosed? Diagnosing Mog Antibody disease tends to be done in three main ways. The first of which is an MRI scan. Inflammatory lesions can be spotted in the scan, indicating areas where myelin has been attacked by Mog antibodies. These lesions can be used to see whether a patient is having an active attack of Mog antibody disease. The second way to diagnose Mog antibody disease is by a lumbar puncture. A lumbar puncture, also known as a spinal tap, can be used to look at the cerebral fluid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. This is performed by inserting a needle between the bones of the spine. Mog antibodies can be found within the fluid and confirm a diagnosis of Mog antibody disease. The third and final way Mog antibody disease can be diagnosed is by a blood test. A special blood test can be used to detect anti-Mog antibodies in the blood of a patient. If antibodies against Mog are found, then a diagnosis of Mog antibody disease is likely to be the cause of the demyelination. For an accurate diagnosis of Mog antibody disease, the blood test needs to be done using a live cell based assay. Due to Mog antibody disease presenting similarly to other demyelinating conditions, these methods are often used in unison to make the diagnosis. So how is Mog antibody disease treated? Treatments of Mog antibody disease can be broken down into two different types, acute or preventative. Acute treatments are given at the onset of an attack or relapse, and preventative treatments are given to stop future attacks from happening. 
The first acute treatment for MOG antibody disease are IV or oral steroids. An initial attack or relapse from MOG antibody disease is likely to be treated with IV corticosteroids. IV steroids are used to reduce inflammation which has already occurred by reducing the activity of the immune system. These steroids are given via a cannula or IV directly into your bloodstream, generally for 3-5 to five days. This may be followed by oral steroids such as prednisone or prednisolone for 3-12 to 12 months. If you are taking oral steroids for a number of months, additional medication may also be prescribed to stop side effects of steroids. If the IV steroids are unsuccessful, plasma exchange, also known as PLEX, may also be used alongside the steroids. PLEX is often considered when a patient shows with severe symptoms of demyelination. PLEX works by replacing the plasma of an individual's blood with new plasma or an artificial substitute. Any inflammatory antibodies or proteins, such as anti-MOG antibodies, in the plasma are removed from the patient using this treatment. While some people may only have one attack from MOG antibody disease, others have multiple attacks, and often these people are put onto preventative treatment to stop future attacks from happening. Currently there are no approved medications for MOG antibody disease, but some of the following treatments have had some success in preventing relapses. The first of these treatments is intravenous immunoglobulin, also known as IVIG, and this is a treatment where healthy antibodies are pulled from donors and administered to a patient via an IV or cannula monthly. These antibodies are made by the donor's immune system and help regulate the patient's own immune responses in order to prevent attacks. Mycophenolate mofetil, also known by its brand name Cellcept, is an oral medication taken twice daily which suppresses the immune system. This medication was originally approved to prevent patient bodies from rejecting transplanted organs, but has also found some success in autoimmune conditions. Azathioprine, also known as Imuran, is an oral treatment usually taken twice daily in order to suppress the immune system. Imuran has also been used to treat organ transplant rejection, rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune disorders. Steroids may also need to be used in combination with Imuran to prevent future MOG antibody disease attacks. Lastly, rituximab, which is also known as rituxan, is a treatment given by IV which suppresses the immune system by depleting a type of white blood cell known as B cells. This treatment is usually given four times per year in an outpatient medical centre and has found some success in preventing future MOG antibody disease relapses. So, in summary, we have gone through what MOG antibody disease is, its symptoms and how it presents in patients, as well as how it is diagnosed. We also covered the most common treatments currently used to treat MOG antibody disease. If you want to find out more information on MOG antibody disease, then visit our website for a complete information page with more details. I'll leave a link to this page in the description of the video. Thanks for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a like, drop a comment in the comment section below, and subscribe. We would really appreciate it. Sign up to our mailing list on the My My Lettuce website to keep updated with any MOG antibody disease information and also receive a free recovery tracker to help manage your condition. Thanks again and I'll catch you soon in the next video.